I don't want to get too technical here because I don't want to go into all the basics of electronics, but um, I just want to show you how, trans how uh, solid state and tube equipment is similar. So the first drawing is a solid state half wave power supply. It's a basic common power supply. This is a symbol for a transformer. It has a center tap that's grounded, two diodes, a capacitor, and this is your output. So if you put AC voltage in, say you put 110 volts in, the transformer converts that down to say 20 volts out, center tapped. You ground the center tap, and these only allow power to go one direction and then the capacitor will filter any extra AC that gets through and smooth the power supply out and you have DC out between this terminal and ground because the center tap is grounded. That's a standard half wave power supply. <clears throat> the tube version of the same thing looks like this. And hopefully I've drawn both of these right. It's been a while since college. Um, same thing, you have a transformer. This transformer has two secondaries. It has the main secondary, which is the same as this one. And it also has a smaller secondary that puts out 5 volts for the heater. you got to have a heater on the tube. So you put 110 volts in, you get 5 volts out here. Now tubes tend to work at a higher voltage. So let's say we have 200 volts here instead of the 20 like this one. So you have 200 volts center tapped here. This is actually your diode, the same thing as you got here, only it's a vacuum tube. And you pick off your DC off one leg of the filament because it's a directly heated cathode. It doesn't matter which one, but you pick your terminal, pick your DC off from there. And you put a capacitor across it to filter and you have DC out. Okay, now we're going to start getting into the nitty gritty technical parts of it. How tubes work. Uh, most of the drawings that I'm going to do now, we're, we're going to leave the filament off <clears throat> because in most schematics, they don't put the filament in there. They put it with the power supply because it just clutters up the diagram. Tube biasing. Tubes need to be biased to work right. Same as transistors, anything that's active, um, like a transistor or an SCR or anything like that, they all need bias. What does bias mean? Bias is just what potential each part of the tube or transistor or whichever, what potential is at each terminal and how does it relate to the other terminals. In a tube, the plate is always positive high voltage, which this is probably a good time to mention that if you're going to work on anything that runs with vacuum tubes, take extra caution. High voltage is used in tube equipment, sometimes up to five, six, seven hundred volts. It will retain that voltage even after you've turned it off and unplugged it in the capacitors in the power supply. So if you don't know what you're doing, please don't mess with tube equipment. Um, I don't want anybody to get a nasty shock. So the, the plate or anode of the tube is always positive in reference to ground. The cathode is always the negative terminal. The grid, the control grid, like I said earlier, it's like pinch and shut a garden hose. That needs to be more negative than the cathode. <clears throat> so how do we do this? If the grid is ground, then no signal can pass because your audio signal in would be hooked to ground and that won't work. So how do we do it? Well, the original way that they did it was with two power supplies. Three if you count the filament, but like I said, we're not going to put that in anymore. You have your load, which would, we'll say is a speaker, and you have your high voltage B+, plus, say is 100 volts. That's to the plate, the anode. Then your input signal, which is your microphone or your CD player or whatever, also has a power supply. We'll say this is 10 volts. That biases the grid 
more negative because the positive of the battery is connected to ground. So if the cathode is ground, now the grid is more negative than the ground and the tube will function correctly. If the grid is not more negative, you will get runaway, which I mentioned earlier is the plates will get red hot and there will be severe damage in a short while of some component in your tube amplifier. This circuit works fine. This is how my battery radio works, the one from the 20s. There's actually three power supplies. You have B+, plus. you have the A supply, which is for the filament, which is 1.5 volts, and you have the C supply, which is grid bias. Um, that works fine. But when you start getting into more modern equipment that plugs in the wall, you would need a rectifier for the high voltage, you would need a rectifier for this voltage, and if it was a directly heated cathode, you would need a rectifier for the filament. So now you got to have three extra tubes, and they wanted to try to get away from that. So, <clears throat> the, the way they get away from it, I will show you in the next drawing. This diagram is called self-bias or cathode bias. There's only one power supply, not counting the filament. That's your B plus over here. Still have the same load, same plate or anode grid, same input signal. But now, instead of there being a battery here, there's a resistance. And we'll just say this is 10 ohms for the sake of argument. But now the cathode is not directly connected to ground. As in this diagram, the cathode is ground. So in order to get the grid lower than ground, or more negative, we needed a battery. So now, <clears throat> we're holding the cathode above ground. So the cathode is not ground anymore. It's 100 ohms above ground. The grid is only 10 ohms above ground. Therefore, the grid is more negative than the cathode the same as it is in this diagram. The cathode is ground, the battery makes the grid more negative than ground, more negative than the cathode. So this would function exactly the same as this, except there's one less power supply required. So this is, this is a basic, basic tube amplifier. And these values are probably nowhere near what would be actually encountered. And there would have to be much more components in circuitry in order to get this to function. <clears throat> the biggest thing that a tube would require is an output transformer. Most loads, like a speaker, is only 8 ohms. Well, tubes are high voltage, low current devices. Transistors, on the other hand, are high current, low voltage. Well, a speaker is an 8 ohm load. That works really well with high current and low voltage. So most transistor amplifiers or solid state amplifiers do not need an output transformer. Tube stuff is very high voltage. Like I said before, five or six hundred volts you could have on a plate. You don't want six hundred volts going out to a speaker with really low amperage. It's the same amount of power. Power is volts times amps. So if you have a hundred volts and one amp, that's 100 watts. Or you can have 10 volts at 10 amps and it's still 100 watts. 10 times 10 is 100. So a transistor that is rated at 100 watts would be say 10 volts driving 10 amps. That would give you 100 watts of output. Whereas the tube would say be 100 volts at 1 amp to get you the same 100 watts of output power. Well there's only one amp that's not enough current to move a voice coil efficiently so what we do is we'll put a transformer in here to couple this to the output speaker so that the load of the transformer might be 10,000 ohms and the output of the transformer will be 8 ohms and it will match the speakers to the tube so that it will work more efficiently so there's another item that needs to be on a tube amplifier that makes it heavier and bigger than a transistor amplifier. 